Hey everyone, welcome to Ringo Kids. I'm Jeff and I'm really excited that you guys are here for us as we start a new series. Let me start by asking you a question, okay? Do you guys know what this is or these things are? They're remote controls. This one controls a DVD, this one a TV, and we have one that's got a little laser light on it and controls a presentation program. And then I have a really cool one here. This is a really neat one. This is a drone. This controls a little drone uh, through my phone. There are so many things that you can do with remote controls. They control sound systems, game consoles, and the list goes on and on. When I was growing up watching television or listening to the radio, I had to get up off the couch because we didn't have TVs in our bedroom, and I'd have to stand up and walk over and turn the channel by hand. That's right, because we didn't have remote controls back then. Kind of dates me just a little bit, but we didn't have them. Now, however, the remote control has all the power. They make the choice of what's gonna be watched, played, or listened to. They're in our home, in our car, and even in our pocket with our cell phone. I love remote controls because honestly, <laughs> they make me feel a little bit powerful. With the remote control, we can pause the movie and you can also lower the volume in the room. And we can even rewind and watch a clip over and over as many times as we want. We have the power and we can control it. Unfortunately, life is not like that. We can't just pull out a remote control and control our attitudes or our emotions or actions or even our mouths. Life is a little bit different than that. I wish we could use something like this to show some self-control but we're not like the appliances that we use every day. We have to learn how to show self-control, don't we? We have all gotten upset and said something mean to others, or we've stormed out of the room, slammed the door, and hurt somebody's feelings, or even worse. Hey, but what if we could take some time and learn through God's word how to control our temper, our emotions, or even our tongues? Hey, I'm gonna be honest, okay? Learning self-control can sometimes be really hard. Self-control is choosing to do what you should do even when you don't want to. All month long, we're going to be looking at how we can choose self-control. And we're going to see how choosing self-control has more to do with God than it does with ourselves. And guess what? God wants to help us with self-control. In fact, self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit. How cool is that? When we follow Jesus, God's Holy Spirit is with us and helps us make good choices. And he helps us control our attitudes and our actions. For the next couple weeks, we're gonna be looking at a couple stories that help us learn self-control. The first story is about Jesus, as he's faced with several different temptations. The story is found in the book of Luke, chapter four. You see, Jesus was tempted to do things that only honored himself and not God. But Jesus was able to answer every temptation with the Bible, and we can too. When we read the Bible, it gives us answers to help us deal with temptations. The bottom line is this, we need to be ready to do the right thing. Our next story is from the wisest man who ever lived. His name is Solomon. He says in the book of Proverbs that someone without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. You see, city walls are important. They keep people safe and secure from outside influences like bad people and other threats and other experiences. And when we lose control, we can become exposed to the enemies and bad experiences. You see, self-control can bring protection. And our bottom line for this is if we lose control, it's gonna cause a lot of trouble. I'm excited about all this month as we learn how self-control can help us please God and avoid other negative experiences that can hurt us and those we love. Our memory verse for the month is found in the New Testament of the Bible, and it's written from one of Jesus' disciples. His name is Peter. It's the second Peter chapter one, and this is what he says. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. That's verse three. And this is a great verse that helps us understand that God wants to help us live with self-control. So hang out with us as we see how God helps us with his power to make wise choices, even when we don't really want to.
Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. been so so kind to me excited about what's in this box. I found it online and I had to get it. It's kind of a throwback to another era. And as much as I just want to rip into this box without thinking and just throw it everywhere, it's probably best if I exercise a little bit of self-control. <sighs> self-control is choosing to do what you should even when you don't want to. So I'm choosing to do a nice, and slow, controlled unboxing. Step one, very carefully cut the tape from the box. Step two, open the box. Oh. 
slowly open the box and huh, what do we have here? Instruction manual. Very important. Not one remote control and the treasure of treasures. A VCR video set recorder. Let me just uh here. <laughs> now I can watch movies like our ancestors did. All I need is a video cassette. American Tale 2, Bible Goes West. Sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> All right, so now I just, I just pop that. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you know what? Where's the, oh. I think I broke it. I don't understand. I thought that I was, I thought I was prepared. I, I don't know where I went wrong. Oh, I have got a remote control. I can just rewind. Oh, in today's story, we're going to rewind back to when Jesus spent 40 days in the desert. Don't worry, he was more prepared than I was. <sighs> See you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter four, verses one through 13. After his remarkable birth, Jesus spent most of his years growing up in Nazareth. To others, he probably seemed like any other Jewish boy. He ran and played with the other kids. Catch! He worked in the carpentry shop with his father, Joseph. As he grew older, he studied God's word, the part of scripture we now know as the Old Testament. Worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. It was not until Jesus came to the Jordan River to be baptized by John that others began to realize how extraordinary he was. This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. 30 years of life had led Jesus to this point where God himself announced that Jesus was the chosen one. It must have seemed like the perfect time for Jesus to begin doing miracles and gathering new followers. But that's not what happened. Instead, God's spirit led Jesus into the desert for 40 long days. God, I trust you. I trust your plan. During this time, Jesus ate nothing at all. He focused on God as the one thing he needed above all else. But. He wasn't alone, not quite, because the devil showed up. You must be hungry, so hungry. It was true. Jesus was desperately in need of food. You are human, after all. The devil refused to leave Jesus alone. He needled and tempted him at every opportunity. At the end of 40 days, he offered Jesus a smooth, heavy rock. If you are the son of God, Tell this stone to become bread. Jesus stared at the round stone. He knew as God's son, he could easily turn it into a warm, crisp loaf of bread and just tear off just a large, chewy piece to instantly satisfy his hunger. But he knew every word God had spoken. It is written, man must not live only on bread. Suit yourself. The devil wasn't finished. He led Jesus to a high place where the whole world appeared to spread out beneath them. Every powerful kingdom, every palace, every throne of all the rulers on earth. The devil smiled. He seemed reasonable in control. I will give you all their authority and glory. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. 
If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus didn't flinch. He knew he would rule all those kingdoms. And to take the easy way, he knew it would lead to disaster. And again, he spoke God's words. It is written, Worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. The devil narrowed his eyes and readied his last shot. He led Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. They stood upon the very highest point of the temple itself. The worshippers far below looked as small as beetles. The devil smirked. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. It is written, the Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. The devil's true question seemed to hang in the air. Does God really love you? Prove it. But once again, Jesus had God's own words at the ready. Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. The devil seethed with rage. He couldn't trap Jesus. So he finally gave up and left until his next good chance. When the devil was gone, God sent angels to take care of Jesus and provide everything he needed. And because Jesus spent his entire life discovering what God said, when the time came, he was ready to make a wise choice. Huh. Let's find out where I went wrong, shall we? Full screen. Rewind. There. And play. Very important. Not. That was my mistake. Tossing out the instructions. If I want to use a VCR, first, I have to learn how to use a VCR. Makes sense, doesn't it? No? How about this? When Jesus was in the desert, he was tempted by the devil to do things he shouldn't do. But Jesus was prepared. He used things he'd learned from what we now call the Old Testament to help stand against temptation. Most of us probably won't spend 40 days without food in the desert, but we will definitely be tempted to do things that we shouldn't do. You might be tempted to yell at your little sister. You might be tempted to watch YouTube when you're supposed to be doing your homework. You could be tempted to eat that whole pizza instead of saving some for your friends. So what do we do? How do we control ourselves when we're tempted to do what we shouldn't? If you want to do the right thing, first, you have to learn the right thing. You need to be ready, prepared, and that means you need instructions. We can get instructions for life in all kinds of places. The Bible is an incredible place to look if you want to know how God wants you to live. And God has also placed people in your life that can help teach you the difference between right and wrong. It could be your parents, your teachers, your small group leaders. If we listen and learn, we'll be more prepared when temptation happens. So here's the one thing to remember today. Be ready to do the right thing. Learn now so you don't do something you regret later. I wish this thing could rewind real life. No, it's just a remote. I'll see you next time. MC Haggis, and this here is my best hi, beatboxing hi, partner, hi, Seamus hi, McFamous. Hi, Give him a sample, Seamus. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I think that was mostly spit. This month we're learning about self-control, choosing to do what you should do even when you don't want to, and, and it couldn't have come at a better time. You see, with this being the start of a new year, Seamus was gonna lay off the candy for a while. <laughs> hey! He wanted to limit his sugar intake for his diet for health reasons and too much sugar makes him, you know, like this. Oh, note to self, wash this. Anywho, Seamus ended up eating a giant gummy bear in one sitting. Hi. And now, well, there it is. <laughs> hey, Seamus, come here, lads. 
Come here. Uh, come. No, 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 no. Seamus. Seamus, my friend. Come on. We, 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 we need to shoot our video, our rap video. Okay? Hey, That's, hey. No, no, no. That's nice, but I need you to bring the energy down a little bit so that we can shoot our rap video. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. That, no, no, but that, no. You need to stand up while you're doing that. I didn't. Uh, okay, good man. So, let's go ahead <laughs> and kick it. No, 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 that's way too fast. I can't rap that fast. No, 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 no. That, what do you think? We're, that's Reesey PC times 10. No, slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down a bit. All right? Just do it again. Try it again. Go. No, 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 it's too fast. No, no. What I'm thinking is like a 1980s hip hop. You know, that kind of, that kind of rhythm. Yeah. Here, let me hold that. Kick it. Oh, yeah. With self-control, you can slow your roll and do what you need to do. It can take a toll if you miss your goal. So do what you need to do even when you don't want to. Self-control, word. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm glad we were finally able to be an example of self-control. And of nap time. And of poor wardrobe choices.